Warning, what I'm about to share with you will be considered controversial by some photographers. But before you pass judgment, remember, artists have copied each other's styles and techniques for hundreds if not thousands of years. Now I'm sure you already know that good colour grading can transform your photography. So in this video, I'll demonstrate a piece of software that makes copying the colour grading from any image easy. That software is called Colour Match from Retouch For Me. I'll include a link to their website in the YouTube description. Now although this is sold as a Photoshop plugin, I found that it also works with Affinity. But you can also use it as a standalone editor if you don't have either of these packages. Let's start with a simple example to show you how easy it is to copy the colour grading from one image to another. I've been working on this image in Photoshop and I'm now ready to apply my colour grading. But before I do that, I'll create a consolidated layer where I can apply the new colour grading. I can create the new layer by pressing Shift plus Command plus Option plus E on my Mac keyboard, which on a Windows PC is Shift plus Control plus Alt and E. With the new layer selected, I'll launch the Colour Match plugin from my filter menu. When the software opens, we see an image preview in the centre. The first thing that I'll do to apply my colour grading is to click the Load Reference button. This opens a dialogue where I can select the image that I want to copy the colour grading from. To demonstrate how easy this is, I've copied a couple of images to use from the Finisterre website. Once I've selected the photo, the software then reproduces the look of the image and applies it to my photo. It really is that easy, but there are a few more things that we can do now we've copied the colour grading. The first of these is to export this colour grading as a LUT file. All I need to do is click the Export LUT button at the bottom of the interface. I can then navigate to the folder where I want to save the LUT and enter the name of the new LUT file. The LUT is then saved using the cube format, which is one of the most popular LUT formats. This means that we'll be able to use the LUT file to apply our colour grading with any software supporting the cube format. However, we can also now use our LUT file in the Colour Match software rather than needing to use the reference image. Let me show you how that works and then we'll look at some more features. First I'll remove the reference image by clicking the cross icon. I can then click the LUT Manager button to view my LUTs. The LUT Manager then opens and I have access to an online library of ready-made LUTs. But if you don't like any of the LUTs that come with the software, there's also a link to the LUT store where you can buy more LUTs. Now what I like about the LUT Manager is that it shows you a preview of the image with the LUT applied. This makes selecting a good LUT to use with any image very easy. Another feature of the LUT Manager is that I can also access my hard drive by clicking this icon at the top. Now I can see the folders where I've saved my LUT files to the hard drive. I can then select the LUT that I want to use by double clicking it. Now we see the image with the selected LUT applied. If you want to see the original photo to compare the difference, click and hold the original button at the top. Then when you release the button, the preview returns to showing the effect of the LUT. If you find the effect of the LUT is too strong, you can easily reduce it using the LUT blend slider. Dragging it left reduces the effect. There's also a second slider we can use to control the strength of the effect, which is at the top of the interface. There is also though a benefit of using this slider in that you can go beyond 100% strength. This allows you to make a LUTs effect stronger than it actually is. To demonstrate that, let's load a different image for editing. I'll start by loading a reference image to match the colour grading from one of my other reference images. This creates a nice look that I like with this image, but I feel that the colour is too strong. This is where these other controls come in. I can now move the colour slider left to reduce the strength of the colour adjustment without affecting the luminance. If we compare this to the original colour image, the colours now look much better. Next, I want to strengthen the luminance adjustment, but the problem is that the luminance slider is already at 100%. 
The way around this is to increase the blend slider at the top to a value beyond 100%. That causes the effect of the luminance and colour to increase. We can then adjust the image by using the colour and luminance sliders to get a suitable level. Then when you have an adjustment that works, save it as a LUT so you can quickly apply it to any other image. That's basically how the software works, and it does it extremely well. But there are a few more points worth mentioning. The first is that if you save all your reference images to the same folder, you can use these forward and backwards icons. They allow you to cycle through the images in the folder to find the ones that work best. The next is that the software also includes some masking tools. Now personally, I don't like these and I don't use them. I don't actually think that they provide enough control. If you're using this software as a plugin for Photoshop or Affinity Photo, it's much better to use the masking features in those editors. These will give you much greater control over how the results are blended into the image. The next point is that although I'm copying the colour grading from a reference image, there's nothing to stop me applying a LUT to the image as well. Overall, I found this a great tool for copying the colour grading from images I like. The ability to copy the colour grading and then save it as a LUT to apply to other images is extremely convenient. In this next video, I demonstrate how to apply these cube format LUTs in Affinity Photo. Thanks for watching today and I hope you enjoyed the video. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel and my website using the link in the video description. I'll see you soon for another video.